Last year, we got the action button on the new Apple Watch Ultra, and this year the action button came to the iPhone 15 Pro line. This is the feature that I am the most excited about on the new iPhones. The possibilities of how you can use just this one button are nearly endless. For me, I built a shortcut that adapts to whatever mode I'm in, and then just shows me the options based on that context. Now this shortcut isn't just limited to running on the action button. In fact, I have it living on the dock of both of my iPads. And if you're using a regular Apple Watch, a non-Ultra one, you could also pin the shortcut to be a widget in the smart stack on a regular Apple Watch as well. I found it extremely useful being tied to a physical hardware button so that I can run it wherever I am in a given OS. This video is sponsored by Dark Noise. Let's get into it. For starters, the action button can be used for a ton of different things. Toggling silent mode, quickly launching the camera app and snapping a photo, turning on the flashlight, recording a voice memo, and more. But what we are going to use is shortcuts. In this menu here, you can pick from a bunch of pre-built shortcuts from apps you have installed or shortcuts you've downloaded or built yourself. The shortcut we're gonna be using is called Action Cut. I'm gonna link to that and everything else I mentioned in the description below. Let me walk through how I'm using this shortcut first so you all can get an understanding of how it works. I made a video a couple years ago talking about focus modes and how my devices are always in a focus even when I'm not working. This is still true to this day. I have different focuses for working, filming, meetings, and just personal time. I also use the built-in driving and sleep modes. What these do is control what notifications can alert me when I'm in a given context. This also allows you to control what is active. This can be home screens, lock screens, Safari profiles, and a few other things. Working, filming, and meetings are obviously my work modes, and they filter different notifications and apps based on my context. For example, I don't want any notifications of any kind coming through when I'm filming. This can just throw off when I shoot. But when doing general work, of course I want task manager, calendar, and other work-related notifications. When I'm not working, I am in my personal mode. This lets mostly everything through while still letting me control active home screens, lock screens, notifications, and more. If you don't always want to be in a focus, this shortcut will still work for you, and I'll explain when we get to that bit. You can set up different focus modes in Settings Focus. All right, let's move on to how Action Cut works. I'm going to use my iPad to walk through this shortcut, but you can build and configure it also on an iPhone or a Mac. Action Cut uses a series of if statements to check to see what context your device is in when running. It will then give you a menu of shortcuts that you can run based on that context. The first if statement checks to see what device the shortcut is running on. If you're running this on an Apple Watch, you will get this first menu here. The reason why the Apple Watch version is getting its own menu is because the Apple Watch version of shortcuts is very limited and not all actions I need to run some of my bigger shortcuts are here. So I just filter the shortcuts that will run on the watch and that are useful to me here. For most of the menu options, I use the run shortcuts action to trigger other shortcuts. This reaches outside of the shortcut you are currently running in and will run a different shortcut you have in your library. This way, if I need to modify a shortcut because I change an app or come up with a better way of doing something, I don't have to update multiple shortcuts. For the Apple Watch section, focus modes are ignored. This menu will always be the menu that shows up on your watch no matter what focus you are in or even if you have a focus enabled. The first shortcut in this menu is the backbone of my whole focus system. This is called Mode Cut. In here I put all my different types of work modes. I can quickly select one and it will change my focus mode, run other actions like time tracking, change settings, or even toggle smart home devices. If you download this shortcut, you will have to do some configuring yourself. Unfortunately, I have no way to pull what focus modes are on your device. So for you, you'll have to go in and delete the text in the menu and type in what context you want. Then go into the focus actions and select the modes you want to use. The very first option in this menu is another shortcut called reset shortcut. 
This puts my device in what I consider to be the default state, which for me is running my personal focus. It also turns off any time tracking I might have been doing. Mode cut is how I toggle focus modes. I don't use the control center toggle. This way my devices always stay at a focus and I don't have to worry about them being set off. When I'm done working for the day, I run this reset focus shortcut. The next shortcut is called task cut. Task cut is a way for me to quickly enter a new to do into my task manager. I have a version for things and reminders I will link to in the description. On the watch, this is a pretty simple shortcut. You just get a text field and you can enter the name of your to do and add it to your inbox. There's a bit more to this shortcut, but we're going to cover that when we get to the other devices. The last shortcut on the watch is my shopping list shortcut. This just adds items to my shopping list in whatever task manager I am using. Revolutionary, I know. This is another one where I have a version for reminders and a version for things I will link to. All right, now we get into where focus modes start coming into play. The way these next if statements work is they get your current focus modes. The shortcut will then show you the menu if it matches that focus mode. If not, it moves on. The first focus is for the driving mode. I use the built-in driving focus that becomes automatically enabled when my phone connects to my car. Now, if you name your focus mode something different or want to run them in a different context, you can just delete the name out of the if statement. If you do replace them with something else, make sure you spell it exactly the same way it is spelt in settings. For my driving menu here, I just have two different actions that run here. The first plays my Apple Music radio station, and the second just resumes playing my current podcast in Overcast. If you use Spotify or another podcast player, you can just swap out these actions with whatever player you are using. I use this menu a lot when I get into my car and want to quickly switch over to something different to listen to. I also added one more demo action in here just to show you what can be done. If you have a smart garage door opener, you could add controls here to open your door from this menu if your garage door supports shortcuts or home kit. But if you have CarPlay or HomeKit garage door opener, there's an automatic button that shows up when you get close to your house. So this isn't something I use. Next up is my personal mode, and this is the last of the if statements, but there is still another menu to cover. The first shortcut here is mode cut, which we already talked about. Again, this is so that I always have a focus enabled. The next shortcut in here is Capture Cut. This is my Quick Note shortcut inspired by the feature Quick Note. In this version, it asks what you want to jot down and it saves it to my Quick Note folder in Obsidian. But where this gets really interesting is if you have a Safari page open. It will then grab the link from that page and add it as a markdown link in that note. This is where the action button really shines because before there wasn't an easy way to to run a shortcut on the iPhone when an app was open. Now, make sure you double check that the input is turned off in the run shortcut action. This will mess up the feature that attaches links to the notes. If it says choose variable, you're good. If not, tap on it and select clear variable. I also have a version of this shortcut for drafts and notes, though notes has the built-in quick note feature, so I'm not sure how useful this is there. If you use the Obsidian version, you will need to configure it to work with your vault, but I figure if you're an Obsidian user already, you probably know how to do that. If not, I am working on an Obsidian guide that should be out soon. Like Capture Cut, Task Cut on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac will attach links. The Things 3 version of this shortcut opens the quick entry window so you can fill out your task info, assign a date or a project, and whatever else you may want. In the notes field, it will attach a link if you have a Safari page to open. I use Snippet Cut to store text snippets I use often. This requires the app DataJar. The way this works is you create a list called Snippet Board in DataJar. When running this shortcut, you will be asked to either save your clipboard or get an item to copy to your clipboard. If you pick Save, whatever text you recently copied will be added to this list. I use this for links, email addresses, physical addresses, text snippets I write often, and more. If you select the Get option, you will see a list of everything that you have saved to this list using the shortcut. Whatever you select from this menu will be added to your clipboard so you can paste it to wherever you want. Play Music in-house sets the output of my audio to all HomePods in my house and plays my Apple Music radio station. I use this 
every day and love it. I have three sets of HomePods, and where they're positioned, no matter what room I'm in, I can hear music. Play Podcast in-house does the same thing, but plays a podcast throughout the whole house. I, I bet you didn't see that coming. Laundry Timer lets me pick from clothes or bulky items and sets a task in my task manager with a timed reminder on it. I use this instead of my timer because I don't want to see a live activity on my device for laundry. It's not that important, but it is important enough I want to remember so that stuff doesn't just sit in the wash. I have a version for both reminders and things I will link to. There is a bug though with either shortcuts or things three that when setting a timed reminder doesn't work on the watch. This is why I just use that on the phone. If you download the reminders version though, it'll work on the watch just fine. Shopping list is the same shortcut that runs on the watch, but if you're on an iPhone, iPad, or Mac, you can enter multiple items in one run. Just make sure each item is on its own line. Once you hit done, it'll separate out each item and add it as its own task to your shopping list project. This last menu here in our shortcut will run against any focus modes we haven't specified yet. This is also what runs if you don't have a focus mode enabled. For me, the only focus modes that are left that we don't have an if statement for are my work and sleep modes. Since I don't run shortcuts in my sleep, I figured I could just ignore that one. This menu will have some familiar shortcuts in it like mode cut, capture cut, task cut, and snippet cut. These are at their most useful when I'm working, but they do the same thing when in my personal mode, so I'm not gonna rehash them. Reset focus gets its own option in the work menu. Like I mentioned, I use this as a quick way to reset my devices back into the personal mode and turn off time tracking. New video project is a shortcut that builds out a project and all of the corresponding tasks for when I'm working on a video. It's fairly specific to me, but I'm still gonna link to it for people that might want like a project template shortcut. Play Music starts playing my Apple Music radio station. I really like this as it's a way to quickly play something I would like and not have to sit there and scroll through my library. I'm a pretty picky person. This just plays to whatever my current audio output is set to. AirPods, desktop speakers, or even the iPad speakers. Usually when I'm working, I have headphones in blocking the outside world. This is why I don't play music to my HomePods in this mode. Background audio is a shortcut that takes us the different mixes I have made in dark noise, randomly grabs one, and starts playing it. This way I can mix things up when I'm working and not listen to the same scene all day long. This video is sponsored by Dark Noise. Dark Noise is one of my all-time favorite applications. This is a noise app that doesn't just sound good, it looks good as well. Dark Noise has over 50 different high quality sounds from white noise to thunderstorms to calming beaches to spaceships. When playing a sound, you get these stunning animations. But the app takes it a step further as well. You can make mixes of the sounds to build custom scenes. One of my favorites that I made mixes heavy rain and thunderstorms with creek and windy tree sounds. This is extremely calming to me. Dark Noise is the app I use when I need to focus and get some serious work done. I can distract myself really easily and avoid the task at hand. To combat this, I throw in my AirPods, turn on noise canceling, and put on dark noise. The rest of the world simply just disappears and I'm focused just on the task in front of me. Dark noise isn't only for working. It's great for that, but it also works out really great if you're somebody that needs white noise to fall asleep to, or maybe you wanna just put on some lake sounds and relax. Dark noise is available on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Dark Noise is free to download, so go check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description below, and my thanks to Dark Noise for sponsoring this video. Action Cut is designed to adapt to you. While this is how I've been using it, I wanted to give you all a way to make it work for you. In the description, I will link to my version and all my shortcuts, but there will also be an Action Cut template for you. You can use this template to build your own version of the shortcut. The core of this shortcut is the same as my action cut shortcut. It starts with the watch if statement. If you don't have an Apple Watch Ultra, you can pin a shortcut widget to the smart stack and run action cut from there. 
Then there are the focuses for if statements. In the if action, add the focus mode name you want those menus to run against. This can be any focus mode, but it has to be spelt like it is in the settings. This is super important. For the menus, you can add as many shortcuts as you want. Hit the green plus button to add more. I like to use emojis in the menu to kind of help each option stick out so it's not just a wall of text. If you want to remove a line, hit the red minus button and it'll delete that option and anything in that menu. Once you have your menus named, you can add actions in there. Just drop actions under the menu title if you want to build your shortcuts in the individual menus. Or you can do what I do and use the run shortcut action. The benefit of using the run shortcut action is you only need to build that shortcut once and you can easily update it. It also makes the editor look a lot cleaner. Messy shortcuts can become difficult to work in. For the run shortcut action, just tap where it says shortcut and select from the menu of shortcuts in your library. You have to have the shortcut in your library first. You can find more shortcuts in the gallery, but there are a ton of great resources I will link to as well, along with all the shortcuts I talked about. If you do use the run shortcut action, remember to turn off input for stuff like capture cut or task cut. Basically, you have to do this for any shortcut that is passing content to another shortcut. You can select it and hit clear variable. If it says choose variable, you're already good to go. While you absolutely could just have a long menu list of shortcuts to pick from, I find Action Cut to be extremely useful because it adapts to the context I'm in. On my Apple Watch, it's not showing me a bunch of shortcuts I can't run, and when I'm in my work mode, it's not showing me a bunch of personal stuff that I just don't need at that time. If I do say so myself, I love what I did with this shortcut. In fact, it replaced the shortcuts widget on all of my devices. It's not on my iPhone, iPads, nowhere to be found now. I have some issues with the shortcut widget that eh, I'll save that for another video. On my phone and watch, Action Cut is obviously assigned to the action button, but on my iPads, it lives in the dock. This way, no matter what device I am on with even if I have an app open, I'm able to run this shortcut whenever I want. Let me know what you all think about Action Cut in the description below. Again, I'm going to link Action Cut and everything else I mentioned down there so you can go check it out. My thanks to Dark Noise for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.